God bless you, brothers and sisters. I will come here to this channel. I hope that you can hear me well. I'm speaking not that loud. Um, yeah, for those who don't know me, I am Apostle Royal. Um, sent by God, I give him all the glory and the praise. And yeah, before I start um, explaining, I just want to give thanks. Um, to the Lord for this wonderful day that he made and uh, that he has given me again the strength to get up and to shake off the dust and move on. Father, I give you praise and I give you thanks, Father, for all you have done. I thank you for this very precious day, Lord. I thank you for your power, the power of resurrection, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You have done all this that we might know you. Lord, you are wonderful. You are glorious. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your Holy Spirit, Father, that you have sent down, Lord. Father, that we might know you, that we might have that kind of life and help and comfort that you have, Father promised us. Lord, thank you. Lead me and guide me, Father. Anoint my mouth and tongue, Father, in the name of Jesus. And um, Lord, let nothing be of me. Let the flesh right now, Father, be crucified, Lord. But let your spirit speak through me as you have done always, Father. Thank you, Father. Open the heart and the spirit of your sons and daughters that they might hear you, that they might hear your message and what you have to say through me. Lord, I repent for all I have done and I repent, Father, that I have um, following the flesh and that I have not, that I have allowed the enemies to put me down and to just to give up and not to move on and to do what you have called me to do. I have listened to evil voices. I have listened to accusations. I know that many of your sons and daughters are suffering because of the accusations of the enemies, Father, that they have been accused of being not called, of being not empowered and used for service, of being not able and not worthy, but God, you see us differently as man. You, you see us with, with your precious eyes, the eyes of fire. You have refined us. You have purged us, Lord. And we have been crucified with you. Not only that, but we have been resurrected, Father, with you. And we are seated with Christ in heavenly places, in the heavenly realms, where you reveal yourself unto us. Glory be to you, Jesus. Thank you for all you have done, that you have paid the price. You have paid the penalty upon the cross of Calvary. I praise you, Lord, and I bring all before you and say thank you in your most holy, beautiful, precious name, Jesus. Amen. Um, I don't know really where to start, but I will try just to start. Um, I have been, I have been given up. I have been, um, a lot happens, but I think each and every one child of God that is called have been through a lot. So I am not the only one. Why I have not been able to continue my ministry the last weeks and months is because a lot of trials, a lot of temptations, a lot of accusations that I was no longer able to even no more to know who I really am, even though I know who I am in Christ, and I know that I have been called and endued and anointed for service, to serve you and to be a vessel, to be used by him. This very day I have been so much urged in my heart by the Holy Spirit to push, and to get up and do something and to pick up my mantle again and preach. But it was the whole days that the Holy Spirit was nudging me, was just speaking to me, but I got a powerful revelation on, I think it was Friday, the Good Friday. I began to read the book of John and suddenly, again, a really great revelation and enlightenment of the Lord and something happened again and I was distracted. I was again back in the flesh, 
So this is something that is going on for months now, back and forth, back and forth. is a battle, is a battle, is a challenge, is really a war where I have been reduced myself, come to the end of myself and really um, accused the Lord. I have, I have called him names. I have really, I have done things because of my despair and but the Lord in his mercy has always cleansed me and washed me from my filth and my sins and always revealing to me that there is so much more for me. He has so much more in store for me. So as you can hear, there is a lot that I have to share and the Lord, his heart that he has to share with us. Um, and unfortunately, I have not given him the chance to speak through me. And what I want to do first of all is apologizing to all of you. I want to apologize um, and ask you for forgiveness that I have kept all the gifts and um, the Lord has given me. I have kept the gifts and I have no right to keep it because I know that many of you outside there, wherever you are, you are just depressed. You are just oppressed. You are just, you are just asking yourself questions. You have been harassed and tormented by the enemies. And um, I myself know very well what, what it means to be tormented, what it means to be harassed and to be completely alone. I mean, when I say alone, I mean completely alone, 24 hours a day. However, um, the Lord has taken me now, this is the fifth year with him through a lot and has shown me a lot of things, how I can be more than a conqueror. As I said, the arrows, for those who have seen my first message, have been very horrible. Um, I released my first message on um, the glory of God is coming down. But quickly I have removed the video. I felt ashamed. There came a spirit of shame upon me and um, accusations and mockery. So much mockery. So I was asking the Lord questions, um, what's going on and why am I feeling so bad and what is wrong with that video that I have done and if I should apologize to my brothers and sisters, if I should remove it, all of that. What I heard is, no, I have called you. So, but still I have removed that video for weeks now. But the devil is a liar. So I will leave it there. If I have done mistakes in that video, so be it. There is nothing for me to apologize for, for God leading me, for God taking over me, over my spirit. And apart from that, the spirit of prophecy is different. So the spirit of prophecy is not only the spirit of edification and um, um, to exalt, um, or rather to, to, yeah, to lift up, not to exalt, to lift up, um, but it is also the spirit of correction, the spirit of rebuke, the spirit um, of meekness that when God speaks, he speaks in love, but what we forget is that the Lord is the Lord also of judgment and each and every one of us has different calling. We have different callings, we have different mantles, we have different gifts. So if I am different in my talking and releasing my message the way I just um, was led to do so, I will not apologize for that. The only thing what I can apologize for is if I have been in the flesh and said certain things because this is my personality. Well, as you can hear, there are a lot of things that happened. I just wanted to update you about those things that happened and that um, appeared and occurred. And, um, 
but I want to leave these things behind me and start afresh and just be there where God wants me to be. Because as I said, something happened um, a few weeks ago and um, in the midst of my trouble being accused, um, being fired from my job, <laughs> been accused and uh, the woman said something very interesting that opened my eyes she said I should go there where my work my zeal has been where it will be appreciated this is very deep statement of an unbeliever to me I should go there where my where my gifts, where my zeal, where my, yeah, work, everything about me has been just, it will be appreciated. And this is a deep statement. So I left with that statement. Not only that, also my private life is still a battle, a war that I ask myself that I am what is wrong with me? And I believe that many of you ask uh, at this, maybe this moment that what's going on? What is wrong with you? Why can't you not be accepted? Why can't you be loved? Why can't you be respected and honored? Well, let me tell you something. There is nothing wrong with you. And this is what brings me back today to this very moment to share this with you. Again, to pick up my mantle and just move on. There is nothing wrong with you. No matter what people think about you, no matter what they say and that they don't need your help and they don't want your love. And, I mean, literally, they tell you, listen, leave me alone. I don't need you. I don't need your help. Keep your love. All right. Keep it. And give it unto the Lord. Give it unto those who will appreciate it and who need it the most. Stop it. And I do. Stop everything. Give it to the Lord. Even when you are desperate, you don't know what you're doing wrong, what's wrong. There is nothing wrong with you, child of God, woman of God, man of God. There is nothing wrong with you. So the enemy tried to pervert who you are, just to embarrass you, to remind you of your past and the weaknesses. They are using this. And this is what they have done to me. And this in a very deep way that I just, I said, no, this, this just can't be. How can this be possible? A woman ordained, anointed by the Lord, uplifted, never cried for help, never asked. But at this time, I came to the end of myself again. And the Lord was like, he was rebuking me. Am I not the one who uplifted you, who has provided for you, who has given you everything that pertains to life? And I felt ashamed. Yes. So I, I don't need the man of love. Uh, the, the, the love of men, sorry, so that they feel my heart or make me happy. No, because this is something what the Lord has trained me for years to love myself, to honor myself, and to uplift myself, to strengthen and encourage myself in the Lord. And this is what I have done and have been doing for years. But as I said, why I'm sharing this is for you to know that the devil will always use your past to misrepresent you. And I found myself in the same cycle, in the same thing where I said, what is this? I came out of it. The enemy is defeated. But what is wrong? The enemy see what you carry. They want you to bury the gift. And this is what I have started in my first message. For those who have seen it, and I said, don't bury the gift because of the assault of man. However, um, 
this is just what I wanted to share with you. I'm sorry, it's, I have taken a lot now, 15 minutes of um, describing what happened the last weeks and months because it have been a lot and then it have been a war and don't worry about that. If you find yourself in the same situation, same cycle, same, you know, if, if you have been tempted and you, you, you have been finding yourself again in, in a sin, doing something what you never wanted to do again, listen. If you just give it unto the Lord and repent and made up your mind to be again used by the Lord, God will not hold it against you. He says it in his word, no good thing will I withhold from my children, back from my children. He won't do it. But this is the reason why I have decided this very day that I have no right to keep back the message that God has given me. I cannot become that wretched woman to forget what Jesus has done for me on this very day. I cannot forget all the goodness and the mercy of the Lord. This is why I am here and I'm, I'm sharing this with you. I was this morning so full of fire and urge and, and, and the Lord impressed it in my heart that I cannot keep this. If I appreciate what he has done for me on the cross, if I appreciate what that he shed his blood for me, there is no way for me just all this day to sit down and not preach and not and not preach him who he is that he's not dead he's a living god that he rose we have all reasons to celebrate him to acknowledge him to give him praise so Child of God, I'm sorry for the interruption here. Um, yeah, you see the interruption here. I, um, the devil is a liar. The interruption was just that my mom tried to call me. You see, since days, nobody calls me, but I'm preaching, she's calling. I mean, Lord have mercy. <laughs> anyway, let me get back. Holy Spirit, help me. So what I want to share with you is very powerful what God has given me. And I can't keep it. Then if I keep it, then I am really a wretched woman then I am really not transformed, then I am really not. But I am blessed because of His Spirit, because of who He is, and because He lives, I live also. So do you. So, as I started reading John, the first chapter, it was already an enlightenment and my topic is, not my topic, but as I began to read chapter 1 of John, as I said, the Spirit began to reveal things to me and, and, and suddenly the, the Holy Spirit brought it into my spirit. He said, this is something that I should ask you, why do you believe? Why do you believe in Jesus? Have you ever asked yourself this question? Why do you believe in Jesus? Let's find out. Let's the Lord, the Holy Spirit minister into our hearts. Why? You and I, why do we believe? What's the reason for our belief? 
What, what's the reason? Why do we believe in Jesus? Let's find out. Okay. Um, please pick up, pick up your Bible and let's go to John. To John chapter 1. Let's go read from John 1 45. Or let, let's go from 44. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith, saith of him, by the way, this is um, King James Bible, King James Version, so that's, don't be confused by thee and thou and though. <laughs> you can use the words you and so on. Um, Behold an Israelite, indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael saith unto him, when, Whence comest thou? No, sorry. Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Here it comes. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the son of God. Thou art king of Israel. Jesus answered unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. Wow! Not only that, the last verse, and he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Hmm. Bless your word, Lord, the reading of your word and the hearer and the doers of your word in the name of Jesus. Amazing. 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 Spirit of the living God. Now, the question is still, why did Nathaniel believe in Jesus? Why? The Lord asked him this question. But he was not really able to answer it. Why was it so? Can you answer? Why do you believe in Jesus? Can you? What is your answer? I know why I believe in Jesus. Oh, Lord. I don't want to take it before I finish the message. Why? I will tell you this at the end of the message. Now, look at it. Consider. Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Not only that. He acknowledged him as the king of Israel. That's amazing. So, this reminds me upon the ants 
closer an encounter that Peter had with the Lord. And before I go any further, I would like to compare these two persons, characters, and encounters concerning the question, why this man believed in Jesus? What was the difference between Nathaniel saying, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, and Peter acknowledging thou art the Christ? Let's go and read it. Find out. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18 because these are if you read it just with your flesh you will never find out the difference between the two it is only the Spirit of God that will reveal unto you and open your eyes to see where the difference between the two persons are Now, Matthew chapter 16, Jesus asked his disciples, and he's not only asking just one, Peter, he's asking all of them. In verse 15, he says, He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Because as he asked them this question, who people, who do they say that I am? They began to mention different names, right? Some say John the Baptist, some say Elias, some say Jeremiah. So, but Jesus asked them personally, who do you say that I am? 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the, the Son of the living God. Is it not similar what, what Nathaniel has answered? Now see the answer of the Lord. May God open your heart and spirit to catch this revelation. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, hmm, Jesus, katozotoli, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. But who? But my Father, which is in heaven. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Let me help you. Both of them had the same opportunity, the same encounter with the Lord, but in different ways. What do I mean? Now, if you have been a good student and listener, you would have acknowledged what the Lord said unto Nathaniel. The Lord acknowledged him that he was a good student of the law because he said it to him. Let's go back. Um, Jesus has acknowledged him and said unto him in 47, Behold, as he saw Nathaniel, he said, Behold, look, see, an Israelite indeed in whom is no God. In other words, there is no unrighteousness in him. 
But at the same moment, the Lord rebukes him gently. By saying, because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Hey! You can only understand this and grasp it when you have the Spirit of God who reveals it to you. Now, Nathaniel, of being a righteous man, a student of the word, of the law, indeed an Israelite who kept the law, who kept the commandments, acknowledged the Lord by what? By the scriptures, by the law. Why? Because he believed in the prophets. And there is no way for Nathaniel for him not to acknowledge him as the son of God or even as a prophet. Is because he knew the scriptures. But before he even said that, he was in unbelief. By asking, can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? So in other words, he was doubting. He knew the scriptures. And he had his own understanding of how to acknowledge the Son of Man. How to acknowledge the Messiah. By his understanding. By his own acknowledge or knowledge of Christ or Messiah through the scriptures. Now, if you compare these two men, you will see that Nathaniel acknowledged Christ based upon his religious mind, religious way, religious mindset. Mataka zotuligata. So, this is the first way to acknowledge the Son of God by scriptures. But see, Peter, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, of the living God. dead God. Now Jesus is honoring him and blessing him and call him blessed. Now have you ever asked yourself why Jesus is calling him blessed are thou Simon Bar Barjuna. Very simple. For flesh and blood had not revealed this unto thee, but my Father who is in heaven. So he has acknowledged the living God by the Spirit of God. Therefore his eyes were opened to have an encounter and see who Christ is. That he is not only the Son of God, but he is Christ. The anointed one. This is what it means. The Messiah. The anointed one. Of the living God. I pray that you catch this message. 
So this is the difference between both, between these two men. Is it something wrong to acknowledge God, to serve God by scriptures, by law, by religion? You can have encounters in different ways. But you can never remain in Christ and in His love if you have no encounters by the Spirit of God. Because the Christ that lives in me, that dwells in me, shall do what? Raise us. Raise our mortal bodies. It is very powerful. Now, why do you personally believe? Do you believe because of your pastor? Do you believe in Jesus because it is Easter? Do you go to church because it is time? It is, it is Easter. <laughs> it is, you know. Do you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? This is why I personally could not stop and sit down any longer and endure it to be quiet. Why? Because of my encounters with Jesus Christ. And there are uncountable encounters with my Lord. But this can only be done by His Spirit. I had never before an encounter with Jesus Christ by my religion, by my background. I was a former Jehovah's Witness. And up to today, they resist Him. They reject him, but they don't know because they are not partaking of the communion where the Lord said, do this always in remembrance to me. Now please ask yourself, why do you believe in Jesus? It is my encounter, my personal encounter that makes me to preach. Because I preach according to the Spirit. Because I am urged and I am moved by the Spirit of God to acknowledge Christ, what He has done for me. That He has raised me from the dead. I cannot forget Him. And you know what? Nor can you. If you allow him to be your Lord, if you invite him into your heart and allow him to work on you, to wash all the filth, all the dirt, and don't care about what man says. Well, there is also another revelation concerning this. Does this mean that we cannot fall short to the glory of God? Yes. Yes. I have sinned. I have done things that I supposed not to do. Oh yes, just a few days ago I have called God all kind of names. Oh, yes, I did. But see, there is no way that you cannot repent if truly you had an encounter with Jesus Christ. You will fall on your face and you will weep and regret what you said. This is where I want to take you also 
there are also two different or let me say another situation what made let me let me remind you once again Nathaniel knew the law and the Lord honored him but because of the prophecy because what he has seen because before he doubted can there anything good thing come out of nazareth is somebody telling you can any good thing come out of you out of your family can anything happen to you can we ever be changed transformed i mean come on now people know you <laughs> they know you very well i mean listen there are people that know you more than your father and mother and they will even tell you that in your face listen if ever somebody told you this this person knows nothing nothing about you let it go forgive forget move on so please don't be discouraged nobody can know you more than christ nobody can know you and your walk with christ more than christ himself but if you allow people to treat you down and tell you the same thing listen see the spirit behind this is what the lord always told me see the spirit behind and see that the enemy used that person to accuse you to finish you to rubbish you to take you out of your assignment out of your calling please leave these people behind you let them go it's hard it's painful i know what i'm talking about but forgive them for they don't know what they do this is what christ said these were his very last words almost before he said it is finished forgive them they are a tool of the enemies to destroy your future your destiny please ask yourself why do i believe in christ is it because i have been grown up in a christian family is it because someone just preached to me is it just to please somebody come on now is it maybe even the fear to go to hell what is that thing that makes you to believe in Christ do you really believe in Christ do you really know who he is did you ever had an encounter with him without your church without your pastor without your prophet without your organization why do you believe in Jesus let it sink deep in your heart Oh Jesus, thank you Lord. Now listen. Jesus Christ has honored, right? Acknowledged Nathanael. But still he rebuked him. Only those who have eyes to see they will see that the Lord has rebuked him. The same he did with Peter. You remember? But what was the difference now another situation that shows when you receive christ you might fall short of his glory you might 
misbehave. You might do foolish things. You might sin. You might misbehave. But you might even deny him for that short moment of that of temptation. For my Bible tells me so. That there will be temptations. But what makes you to be again on course is your relationship, your encounter with Christ, your revelation about Him. And this is the difference, the second one I want to give you between Peter and Judas Iscariot. I see that the video is already long. But I pray that this encourages you, for you to take your time and listen. So, how is it, while Peter had an encounter with Christ and acknowledged him as the Christ, how is it that he still denied him? How is that? The difference is, he knew that it was not him. He wept because the spirit of conviction will convince you of your sins and will make you to weep and cry and, and fall on your face prostrate and, and asking the Lord for mercy. There was no way for the Lord to set up Peter after betrayal as leader and say, after you have converted Malika Zutabakata, after you have been converted, strengthen your brethren. So you must be converted. You must be of a repented heart. Because this is the only thing that keeps you in line with Christ. And nothing else. The world may fall apart around you. But if you are rooted and grounded in Christ, in the word, hmm, there is no way for you to be consumed. That means not that afflictions and temptations will not come. But you will always get up. Why? The righteous may fall seven times, but they shall rise again. If there is hope for a tree that is cut off, what about you, child of God? What about you? What about me? See the difference between the both. It's an encounter with Jesus Christ, a repented heart. Why Judas Iscariot, as the Lord revealed also to me, katozu talita, rebegozo koboko dikada. While Judas Iscariot was full of himself. It was his pride that killed him. But the same spirit tempted them. Mind. The same spirit of fear. Fearing man. Carnal flesh. The same spirit tempted them. But the same spirit that was dwelling in Judas, killed him, but not so Peter. Because there was the Holy Spirit that convinced him, that was in him, that it was leading him, dwelling in him, 
let me say it was upon him because at that time of Petraeus it was not yet fully in him. Let me correct that. But he he had an encounter with Christ. So in the heart of Peter there was the love for Christ. Mm. But in Judas Iscariot's heart as the Bible says the devil entered into his heart. Mm. And the devil will always use people against you to kill you, to kill your destiny. Because they have allowed the devil to enter their heart to grip the heart full of fear. Full of fear. So, Judas is carried Instead of repenting, he killed himself. Why? Because he was ashamed and full of fear of man. How would they see see him? How would they treat him? He was even so fearful and proud that they might kill him. So he said unto himself, "It might be. Come on now, let's kill myself before they kill me." and I put be put to shame. He never considered that the Lord would have been able to forgive him and restore him back. Another thing here is by the spirit of revelation is that the Lord Judas Iscariot was chosen from the beginning to betray Jesus. Why? Because of his heart. Because of his alignment. The Lord gave him the chance to repent, to change, to be transformed, but he rejected it. Why? Because his heart was not upright with the Lord. He chose rather to serve the flesh and mammon. This is why he betrayed it for 30 pieces of silver. So mammon is still ruling the people of God they might have been chosen but they refused to change i pray that you will not refuse to change i pray that you will repent of your sins i pray that you will lay down your self and pick up your cross in the name of jesus Now let me give you a last scripture and then I am done and it's already long I I hope you can forgive me for that Based on how you see the Lord based on how you seek the Lord based on how you allow him to reveal himself to you is how you will be having an encounter with Jesus is how he will reveal himself to you now look at it a scripture that is i mean for a long time i wanted to preach this but i was not able Now I told you that Nathanael has acknowledged the Lord based on his understanding of scriptures that he has studied before. This is why he was able somehow to acknowledge the Lord as the Messiah. But so did also the religious people, the Jews. And this the the the, the, the scribes, right? And this is the last scripture that will just give you a confirmation of what I told you. It's to be found in John 5:39. Because the Jews were arguing with the Lord Jesus like usually. And they have been always letting know the Lord how good they are. They know the scriptures and all of that. But look what Jesus says John 5:39 Search the scriptures 
For in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. It's amazing. The very scriptures that they have, they have searched, they have studied day and night. Blinded them not to acknowledge and see the Lord. But the Lord told them, they think, based on the scriptures, they will have eternal life. So what do you think, child of God? What do you think, daughter of God, son of God, man of God, woman of God? What do you think, by what will you be saved? Why do you believe in Jesus? The scriptures are there to help you. But you must have the spirit of revelation upon you. The Lord told them, like, come on, they testify of me, but you still don't see me, you still don't acknowledge me. And child of God, let me tell you something, and then I will close. No matter what you do for people, no matter how you try, listen, forget it. Let the Spirit of God announce you. Live it. They will never change their mind about you. But I pray that you will change your mind about Christ. You start believing in Him because He's the one that will uplift you and take you up from, from the mary clay and set you and your feet upon the rock to stay. Please, think about this. It's not about... See, your pastor might know a lot of scriptures and stand on the pulpit and preach based on the scriptures, but he is a dead fish. He is just a dead fish because he has no, no revelation and knowledge. He has, he has not known personal Christ. He has no encounter with him. So don't be dismayed. Don't be down because you think your pastor is so doing well. It is not true, child of God. Wake up. It's not true. Let behind you what they told you. Let Christ reveal himself unto you who you are. Any other word in prophecy is just a confirmation what the Lord has already told you. But let first Christ confirm. Let Christ speak to your heart. And lift you up. So please, in closing, this very day, why do you believe in Jesus? Why do you believe in Jesus? Is it because you have thought so? The way you just have been raised in an organization, in a church? Whatever it might be. But listen. This is something very personal that you and I have to face. And I'm going to talk about this very soon. It's another message that the Lord has given me together with this one. I will talk about the 11th hour, about the salvation that is very personal. So I pray that this message has encouraged you, has uplifted you, has given you strength to shake off the dust. Forget about what you have been ever taught, what you have been ever, you know, what you ever heard. Let the Lord teach you and begin 
to believe in Jesus because he has revealed himself unto you and not because man did that. I can only give you, show you the way how you can. Allow the Lord to teach you, reveal himself to you. And I urge you this very day that you will just go on your knees and cry out to the Lord. Cry out for help. Cry out to know him. Ask of him. Seek. Knock. Please, in the name of Jesus, now is the time to answer. Whatever God has called you to do, do it. Do it now, for it is urgent. Repent of your sins, because this is why the Lord has died for us, for the remissions and forgiveness of our sins. Accept Him now as your personal Lord and Savior. Because being in a church, reading the scriptures, makes you not a son of God. Because as the Bible says in Romans 8, 14, um, let me just see and make sure that I have said it right. Yeah. <laughs> For as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. So now ask yourself, are you led by the Spirit of God? Have you received the Spirit of God, which is the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ? Right? According to um, 1 Corinthians, let me check it, 3.17. is the Spirit of God, it's the Spirit of Jesus that you must receive. You must receive. Because without the Spirit of God, you cannot You cannot acknowledge the Lord. No, sorry, what did I say? It? Yeah, 2 Corinthians 3.17. So, I will leave you with the blessings of the Lord. May you be strengthened. May you see the Lord the way he reveals himself to you. May you begin to repent and turn back from your evil ways and deeds of how you see other people and how you think about people, how you treat them and how you speak to them and how you, what you're doing with your life, with the gifts that God has given you, with the anointing and everything about you. So just let it go. Forget about everything. Shake off the dust. The Lord said to me, if people will not receive you, just shake off the dust and move on. Because if not, this will be used against you. And it truly happened. <laughs> I've been crucified and stoned. But I allowed it. So I pray that you will not allow this. I pray that things will be turning for your own good. And remember that all things work together for the good unto them that love the Lord. Do you love the Lord? Do you believe in the Lord? This is my prayer for you. I will leave you with the blessings and the grace of God may rest upon you. Amen. <laughs>